I made a few mistakes, I don't cast stones I react like a cast for these broken bones I'm not a magician, I don't cast spells But when I rock the bells, minds get hypnotized I I saw Heather speak at our church. She talked about her history, her past, and her desire to reach out to women in the adult entertainment industry. The first time we went to the club, we were all really nervous about how we were going to be received because, you know, that's our place of business. Hey, this is Lance with Enoch Magazine. I'm sitting here with Heather Veach at the Stratosphere. We're getting ready to head down to the uh, Olympic Gardens. Uh, well, I don't know, is it Olympic Gardens? Strip club. I don't know what the proper yeah, strip name. Strip club. Be. I mean, you know, I'm trying say, to be. Yeah. They yeah. Say different names, but okay. strip club's good. Yeah. Um, we're getting ready to head down there. Um, what What is the plan for tonight? What do, What do you have um, in mind that's going on? Well, tonight I have a team of women, and we're going to be going into the club, giving out gifts to the girls, um, right into the dressing room. We actually have permission now to go straight to the dressing room, and um, we're going to give out gifts in the dressing room, and what they are, just all different types of things, but on the cards, it says, we love you just the way you are at Central Christian Church. Okay. So really what it is, is an opening, like a, a, a welcoming mat to our church, yeah. so that they know no, you know what, you don't have to change, you don't have to do anything to explore a relationship with God because a lot of these girls think that they wouldn't be accepted. So we're there to say, guess what, you're welcome where we attend church. And that's what we do pretty much even all the other JC's girls. It's whatever local church is willing to say, yes, we'll open our door and we're going to treat these girls with love and not judge them. Awesome. What, what got you passionate about this and what got you um, involved in starting this ministry here? Well, um, I was a dancer and I quit in 1999. I actually worked at the Olympic Gardens. Okay. That's why we're going back to the Olympic Gardens. And um, I gave my life to the Lord and it was really hard. I mean, I was treated like crap by the church. Really, really bad. And then I kind of, to conform to the church, I became a legalist for about five years. I just became the biggest Christian jerk. And while I was in that state, I found out a lot of my girlfriends were dying. And dying of alcoholism, drug addiction, and um, God really woke me up and let me know what a fool I had been to be sitting in a church. I was fine, you know, I was healthy, had a family, and here um, I'm letting all my friends die. And so that's when it started trying to convince other people to go into strip clubs with me and in the beginning we'd buy lap dances mm -hmm. and we would give them twenty dollars and ask them if we could just talk to them mm -hmm. and it went really well but you know management would come over and kick us out and so now um, we found it much better to develop a healthy relationship with the club and we're kind of a benefit to them because there are a lot of girls that shouldn't be there anymore mm -hmm. they're older women there's women that are on drugs and they want to get them out of there they they don't want them there anymore. So we're kind of a plus. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've built up this team of, of women from your church. How excited are you about that and how, how blessed do you feel from God? Because each one of them seem to have a specific a specific thing that God's gifted them with. It's beyond a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's beyond because I, I feel like... Um, I kind of feel like I'm the car, but they're the gas, you know? And all of their talents fuel that car. I might be driving, but without them, they're what I would have thought of church ladies. And they're coming in and they're showing love. So you make gifts for the ministry. What what are these what's what are these gifts about? They're for obviously for the women at the clubs. But what's in them? Uh, for the Christmas outreach, we put um, you know product like uh, uh, body like shampoo and, yeah. and lotions and stuff like that. And some of them sometimes we'll put little candles in them. A lot of times they respond with a question. We'll say, well, we have a little gift for you, and their response will be, but why? Or well, what do you want? They're not used to getting something for nothing. They get cards that are personally written out by Lindsay painfully. <laughs> so she, Lindsay is actually awesome because she just works and works and works for these girls. There's probably over, I'd say 125 lockers and each locker gets decorated. They yeah. get a handwritten card, they get, you know, whatever the season is. Mm -hmm. They get decorations that kind of go with that or whatever our theme for that particular outreach is because every time we do an 
outreach, we put a theme to it. Yeah. Getting to know some of these girls, what is, uh, what would you say is one of the main things that keeps that keeps them there? Like, what? It's definitely money. They don't know what to do once they get out. But they come, a lot of them come from an abusive situation where they've been abused in the past, and so they're used to being devalued. And uh, it's just, it's cyclical in their lives. Um, but they do have a desire to get out. And I think, again, it's just showing them that unconditional love, that we're going to love them no matter what, if they stay in there or if they come out. We're just going to keep showing them love. And that's what's kind of broke through and made that bridge. They're not left with anything. Another thing is, if we're out of gifts, if everyone's out of gifts, we've got to try to leave. So, because last time I think that was probably the hardest thing is standing in there empty-handed, and all the girls are coming up and we have nothing to give them. And um, how many gifts do you have? Um, tonight we have 90. 90 gifts. Hey guys, we're on our way now to the Olympic Garden Strip Club. Uh, we just got done talking with the Heather Beach crew with uh, JC's girls. Um, we're going to meet up with them. They're heading inside backstage, so we're going to be hanging out outside. It's just going to be an awesome time. It's already been uh, incredible in seeing how God's moving, and I know that he's going to do amazing things tonight. like uh, Mary Magdalene and, and all the women that followed Jesus, they actually funded him, they supported him, they risked their life for him. I have to be careful because, you know, people have broken into my house, they, they do hate me for what I do, and um, but it makes a much more exciting life and more fulfilling to really live it for God. Okay. Step one is we're going to go in here, we're coming in with um, our flowers and our decorations. So these flowers go in, This all this decorating stuff will go up all along the whole entire place and um, little Does candles. Patrick's Day love JC's girls. And then um, these cards will go in all the lockers. So that's stage one. And then we'll be back out and grab a bunch of gifts once we're done decorating. Pray for us guys! Yeah, for sure. When I was a dancer, there was one thing, that, you know, um, I mean, the, the hardest part is, I don't know if you guys really know what a lap dancer is or if people actually know what a lap dance is, but what it consists of, and this is what's so hard about the job, is it consists of me taking off, at least when I worked at nude, me taking off all my clothes, completely nude, going in a private room with a man, totally, completely private, and grinding on him for a $20 bill while he tries to have an orgasm. So, um, one guy after another guy after another guy after another guy, you know, the best way I could describe it now is I was willing to accept a $20 bill to be sexually abused. Because it was sexual abuse. You know, when a man's trying to have an orgasm on you for $20 and he's insulting you, calling you a bitch, a whore, a slut, um, you're taking all of that in. Even when you're trying not to, you can't help it and you're taking it all in. And now for a $20 bill, you've just been sexually abused. And the best way I could describe it too is if, you know, if I was over here and um, one of these guys in this restaurant came up to me and say, hey, hey bitch, would you like to take off your clothes and grind on me for $20? I would be offended. I would be so offended and I would see what an offense that was to me. But for some reason within the club, I allowed people to abuse me. And I, I let them believe that it was okay. So I think it's bad for both sides because it's allowing a man to believe that that's okay to treat women that way. They better come all the way over to this. Okay. I'm going to open the door. And okay. Um, we went in and decorated. It was good. We saw a lot of girls that we know. At first, the entrance yes. was like amazing. They were like, whoa! You're back! Woo! You're back. Like all cheering and stuff when we came in. And then we got to work in decorating. And now everyone's lingering around because they know the gifts are coming too. Yeah. So they're all sitting in the dressing room. They are waiting for the gifts. So these are, this is, this is the St. Patrick's Day gifts. So these are little bath bombs that they put in their bath. In fact, they're, they're asking for cookies this time too. Where's the cookies? Where's the cookies? <laughs> <laughs> but these are our baskets that, so each of us have one. 
and Lindsay's in there and we'll have her we'll bring her her basket she's still decorating okay all right awesome I got it okay see ya okay. see ya how do you feel the church has responded to this ministry and to this idea that you that you have um to be honest it's it's been it's been good and bad you know most disappointing part about my story or my ministry is that I found myself to be a form of entertainment for Christians so you know I've been on all the Christian networks I've um, spoken at churches but nobody really wants to do anything they just kind of like that story like oh Heather was so bad and oh she was a stripper and you know did soft porn and oh my gosh now with us she's good yay <laughs> And now, if, if a church doesn't want to start something, I'm not going there. No. I, I don't want to go tell my story yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's, it's funny because you see, you see Jesus in his life, you know, went and ministered with the, with the prostitutes and with, that, with the outcasts, you know. I mean, to me, my idea was Heather needed somebody to make gifts for her ministry. And that's something I knew I could do. That was safe. I could do it in my little house. I could make my little gifts. And that, that's something I was comfortable with. And uh, I... I, that was my plan, and God had a different plan for me. Just loading up some more gifts to take in. We we usually, you know, we make several trips in with gifts, so we don't take in too many at one time. Mm -hmm. And then we just let the girls kind of mingle, and they get interested, and that's how we connect with them. You know, that's the introduction, mm -hmm. the gift. The house mom told us now that they get very excited when they know we're coming, so that's that's really good, you know. You know, we hang the cards and we always sign them JC's girls, and I remember one of the girls saying, who's JC? Now before any of us, any of us, you know, could say, you know, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. one of the strippers yells out from the back, you don't know who Jesus Christ is? And she goes, that's JC? <laughs> and we're like all smiling ear to ear because yeah. it, you know, it, it didn't come from us because before anybody could even open their mouth to say, you know, yeah. here's somebody else hollering. For, you don't know who Jesus Christ is. Jesus. I think it was two weeks ago now. One of the women who came out of the club, out of the industry, was baptized at Central. She accepted Christ and she was baptized. Mm -hmm. The Christmas outreach was really a fabulous experience, and every one of us would agree with this. It was that initially we were there, and we were the church ladies over here, and the dancers over here. Yeah. And it it was we were not connected in any way. And um, it's almost like a middle school dance almost. Yeah. It was just, boys on one side, yeah. girls on the yeah. other. Exactly. Yeah. And it was uncomfortable. And then at some point, I'm not certain when it happened, I looked around, Heather looked around, and it was a party. And we were talking and laughing and carrying on, and we were just people there together, mm -hmm. you know, uh, talking to each other, uh, connecting. And to me, that's exciting. Yeah, that's great. Holly, well, that's good. You're done? We're done. We are done. Well done. And and tonight went well, but to be really honest, it was just a different mood in there tonight. Yeah. Right? Yes, it was. A lot of them were really happy to see us initially, but then once we got in, there was like a mood in the place right. that felt different than sometimes. Like sometimes it's um, more of like a girl's dorm room. You know, girls hanging out, talking, right. playing, and tonight it was more yes. um, like just a different mood. Right. But I always say, you know, I always think of it as successful being that we all gave hugs and talked to the girls we knew. And, you know, one of the girls that had contacted me on MySpace, she walked up and introduced herself to me. And I told her that we'd love to take her out to lunch one day and hang out with her. I got lots and lots of thank yous for the oh, core and thank you. Yes, just that so. they're like, they're just like, this is so nice that you guys continually do this. And there were lots of new girls. Yeah. A lot of girls. Ah. Usually we see more the old girls than the new girls you know and there's a few new girls but it was more new girls than anything else and mm -hmm. they kind of it's it's we were kind of maybe back to stage one of building that initial contact and having that real gentleness and and the girls were more standoffish and then giving them the gift and then hoping that the next time they see us for one the gift says we love you just the way you are mm -hmm. at our church and then um, it lets them know right away 
great that there are people out there that love them and that's valuable because a lot of these girls truly don't know that they would be accepted. They don't know that they would be loved. They think that they're um, like lepers. So, so what, the, what the gifts do is it's really, it's really kind of a welcoming mat to Christianity. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel that, that the church is so afraid of sex? Um, I think because Christianity has become a culture now and not a, a belief as much. I believe that it's become like a system or a culture. And so we have cultural rules that we don't want to break. And being that we, it's just this whole entire system and culture now. And it doesn't uh, really allow for God's work. You know, and until people are willing to take a risk and really take a look at and actually look at the Bible and its reality, really what it says and, and put it to work, then it's going to remain that way. And it's just a nice place. They want it to be a nice place where they could take and raise their kids and kind of create a community. It's a community more than it is an actual um, true, I think, belief in, in what this is all about. You know, it's a safe place. Yeah.